In this class, you will learn two common ways to talk about the future in English. The first way is by using the words going to. This is not a tense, it's just a phrase, an expression that we use to talk about the future. The second way is by using the present continuous. This is a tense and it's used not only for the present, but also to talk about the future. And we will see exactly how to do that. Now this class is part of a series created by Ingvid to help you learn all of the English verb tenses so you can talk about the past, the present, and the future. Okay? All right. So what is the future? The future is any time after now. Okay? So if this is now and that's the past, then anything after now, anything after the present is the future. It could be five minutes from now, it could be years from now, it could be many years from now, okay? But anything after now is the future. And in English, we have many ways and tenses to talk about this time. Some are more basic ways and some are more advanced ways, okay? Some are more basic tenses and some are more advanced tenses. But for now, everything you learn in this class you can use right away in regular conversation and regular communication. So, let's get started. So, when we're talking about the future, you can think about it in a few different ways. The first way to think about it is, is this some kind of formal situation or is it an informal situation? Formal means more uh, official, maybe more business-like, with people you don't really know very well, so you have to be very formal and proper. In that situation, in English, to talk about the future, we have one way, which is by using the word will, which is the future simple tense. I have a separate class just on that, so you can learn that also, if you haven't already. Next, what if it's an informal situation? Informal means it's not so, uh, it's, it's not formal. It's more casual, it's more friendly, it's with people that you probably know quite well, okay? And it could be when you're speaking to them, it could be when you're writing an informal email or texting or something like that, okay? So, what happens in those situations? In those situations, we have to look at whether something is planned in advance or whether it is unplanned, okay? Now, I know you're thinking, really, I have to think about that? Yeah, a little bit, but it's easy. Let me show you how. So, in the informal situation, if you know in advance that you're going to do something, then that is something planned. If you don't know in advance that you're going to do something and you just decide at that moment, that is unplanned. So, if it's unplanned, then we just, again, use will or future simple, all right? So that's done. But in this class, we're focusing on this part here. So if you know in advance that you're going to do something tomorrow, this weekend, next month, next year, that's planned. So you have two options of how to communicate that. You could use going to, or you can use the present continuous tense. If you use going to, for example, your sentence would be something like this. But before I give you the sentence, let's uh, imagine what somebody might be asking you. Okay, so let's suppose somebody asks you what, are you, what are you planning to do on Sunday? Or what are you doing on Sunday? You might say, and you, because you have the plan already, you might say, I'm going to visit my family on Sunday. See how we're using going to? because you have already decided that. You told your family, they're making dinner, everybody's expecting you. This is a plan, you know in advance. So you say, I'm going to visit my family on Sunday. This going to tells us that it's a plan, that it's going to happen in the future, all of these things. Or you could say the same thing in another way by using the present continuous tense. You could simply say, I'm visiting my family on Sunday. That's the second way, all right? 
So this is what we will focus on in this class. Now let's look at when to use these two ways to talk about the future. So the most important thing to remember, as I said, is that we use them in informal situations. Informal communication, spoken or written. Now informal doesn't have to mean only social situations. It can also be at work, with your colleagues and so on, or with your clients if they're good friends of yours. We still speak informally, even at work. And the other point is that they should be planned situations, okay? Not something that you just decide, but something where you have made a plan in advance. Those are the two critical points to remember. But let's look at some situations in which this might actually happen. So when you're talking about arrangements, you have to make them in advance, right? So for example, you could say, we're going to meet at the mall. So here we have an example of using going to, right? Going to meet in this case, all right? Or for intentions, something you plan to do, something you wish you could do, something you want to do, you intend to do it, okay? Means you have a plan to do it, basically. For example, I'm going to exercise every day, all right? Or I'm going to study English every day, whatever your intention is, okay? So again, we see I'm going to exercise, okay? These are some examples with going to, and then we'll look at some examples with the other way, the present continuous. But really, I could say this using present continuous, and I could say these using going to. It doesn't matter because they're both used in the same way. Let's look at another situation. When you're making a prediction, when you're going to say what is going to happen, or what is likely to happen, what is probably going to happen. For example, you've watched a lot of weather reports and you, everybody is saying there's going to be a lot of rain tomorrow. So you could say it's going to rain tomorrow, right? Going to rain. It's like a prediction. Still, we don't know 100% until tomorrow comes whether that will happen. So it's a prediction. So we can use it in that situation. And this is when you're just telling, you know, your family or something, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow, so, you know, do this, do that, make sure to take your umbrella. So it's still an informal situation. Okay, then, of course, for any kind of planned events, uh, and you're, so you're telling your friends, for example, we're flying to Lisbon in July. Now here we have present continuous, right? We're flying. We could say we're going to fly, but we're just saying we're flying because we're using present continuous now. Now, what's important here? Because this is the present continuous tense, right? We're flying. And if I only said, we're flying to Lisbon, then that would be talking about the present. So, when we use present continuous to talk about the future, you have to have a part like this, a time marker that shows that this is going to happen in the future and it's not happening right now. Because if I just said we're flying to Lisbon, it would mean right now. But if I say we're flying to Lisbon in July, that's in the future. We're flying to Lisbon next week, next month, next summer, next year. As long as I say something like that and add a time phrase or expression or marker with the present continuous, then you can use it freely to talk about something informal, or something planned in the future. Okay, got that? We'll be looking at that a little bit more as we go along. Here's another example of something, a planned event. You could say, oh, they're having a party on Saturday night. So we have our important parts, they are having. We can use have in this context to talk about an event. We can use it in that continuous form to talk about an event. They're having a party and then again, on Saturday night, so we have our time marker to indicate that this is happening in the future. All right, so these are the important ways and times when you can use this, these two ways, all right? And remember, we can flip them around. So I could have said here, we're going to fly to Lisbon in July. And I could have said here, we're meeting at the mall tomorrow, okay? If I'm using present continuous, I'll need to add something. But 
Use it for all these situations. Now let's look at the structure for going to. We will look at positive sentences, negative sentences, and also questions. So our basic structure is like this. We have our subject, which means what? I, you, we, they, etc. The verb to be, plus going to, plus the base form of the verb. So for example, if our example verb is to work, the base form of the verb is just work. If the verb was to sleep, the base form is just sleep, okay? So another important point to keep in mind when you're forming this kind of sentence is in the positive sentences and the negative sentences, we don't use the full form. We don't say, I am going to work because it's too artificial and it's too formal. It's, this is an informal situation, right? We're using it in informal context. So we use the contraction. Instead of saying, I am, we say, I'm. Instead of saying, you are, we say, you're. And then we say the rest of it, okay? So you're kind of contracting these two parts, all right? So say it after me, it's easy. And later I will show you exactly how to form these contractions. The first one, I'm going to work. You are going to work. We're going to work. They're going to work. He's going to work. She's going to work. And it's going to work, okay? You'll see that these are all you are, we are, they are. These are all contractions for he is, she is, it is. Okay? All right. Now, if we make it negative, it's very easy. We're just adding the word not. I'm not going to work tomorrow. He's not going to work. They're not going to work. All right? So that's one way. You keep this contracted version and just add that. I'll show you another way soon. If you have a question, what do we do? We change the order, right? We reverse the order. Instead of saying, I am, we say, am I? And now we see the full form of the verb to be here. Here, there are no contractions, okay? Am I going to work tomorrow? Are you going to work tomorrow? Are we going to work? Are they going to work? Is he going to work? Is she going to work? Is it going to work? Like the computer or something. All right? So another thing to keep in mind when you're forming the question is you can add a question word before that or a question phrase. You could say, when are you going to work? Where are you going to work? How long are you going to work? But if you do that, make sure you keep this construction. Don't change this order. Say, when? are you going to work? Keep the same structure, okay? And that's basically all you need to do to use going to for the future. Now let's look at the structure of the present continuous tense when used for the future. If you've been following our series on English tenses, then you may have already learned this, but in any case, let's review. So our basic structure is like this. We have the subject, I, you, we, they, etc., plus the verb to be, then the base form of the verb, and then ing. And to all of that, we have to add a time marker. It's like next week, next month, next year, on Monday, and so on. Okay? Now, this time marker often comes at the end, but sometimes it can also come at the beginning. The most important thing is that you need to have that time marker as well, okay? Otherwise, it will just be present continuous, and they'll be talking about the present. But you want to use this to talk about the future. So let's see how it works. Now, again, you'll see here, not the full form of I am, but the contraction. Why? Because again, we use this particular tense to talk about the future in informal situations. Informal conversations, informal writing, correct? 
So we don't want to use the full form, I am working next week. We just say, I'm working next week. Say it after me. You're working next week. We're working next week. They're working next week. All of these were with are, right? You are, they are, we are, like that. These are all with is. He's working next week. She's working next week. Let's say it's working next week, okay? So it doesn't have to, of course, be next week. It could be any time marker. I just put that here so that you'll remember that here you need to add some kind of time marker, okay? Next, for negative sentences, we're just adding the word not. That's it, okay? So I'm not working next week. He's not working next week. They're not working next week. That's it, okay? Just adding that, uh, that word, not. And we'll be looking a little bit more at contractions very soon. Uh, for the question, again, change the order. Instead of saying I am or anything, we're saying am I. And now, here in the questions, we have no contractions, right? You have the full form, but in reverse order. Say it after me. Am I working next week? Are you working next week? Are we working next week? Are they working next week? Is he working next week? Is she working next week? Okay, that's basically it. And of course, we can add question words before that. When are we working? Well, in this case, if somebody was asking you, then you wouldn't have that in the question, but you would have it in your answer, okay? I'm working on Tuesday next week, okay? Like that. Where are we working next week? How long are we working next week? Like that, okay? So when you have those question words, just put them in here before all of this structure, but all of this structure has to remain the same. And that's how you use present continuous for the future. Now let's focus on some of the spelling changes we need to make when using contractions. So let's look at this example. Instead of saying you are, you could say you're. And how did we do that? We basically took these two words, we took out the A and we added an apostrophe in the place of the missing letter. And that's basically what happens in all of these. For example, I am becomes I'm. Your, we're, there, he's. This is what? This is he is, right? We're canceling the I and putting the apostrophe and making it into he's. She's and it's. Okay, making it negative, I'm not, you're not, we're not, they're not, he's not, she's not, and it's not. And if you were using this, of course, for the future, you'd be saying more than that. You'd be saying we're not working or we're not going to work but I'm just focusing right now on the contraction part of it. The other way you can make it negative, for I, we don't have any other option, but for you and all of the others, we do. So you could either say you are not or you aren't. So what happened here? Let's look, let's take these three words. These are the three words that we're working with. You are not. To make this one, what did we do? We canceled the A here and added the apostrophe and we joined these, your not. And here, same three words, you are not, but here we contracted this part, we took out the O, added the apostrophe and joined those two words, okay? And that's how you can always think it through. Even if you can't remember the spelling, you don't have to remember it so much as understand how that contraction is being formed, and then you'll be able to write it correctly yourself. 
but let's just say it. You aren't. We aren't. They aren't. He isn't. She isn't. It isn't. Okay? So, those are the contractions that you need to use with these forms of the future. Now let's look at how to give short answers when you're asked questions about the future that use going to or the present continuous tense. So let's look at the first question. Are they going to call you? So here, the person asked a question using going to, okay? They're asking about the future. Are they going to call you? So you could simply answer, yes, they are. Or, no, they're not. Or, no, they aren't. Okay? We don't have to repeat the whole question. We don't have to say, yes, they are going to call. We just say, yes, they are. No, they're not. No, they aren't. All right? And you can know that, usually, how to answer, because you can take part of your answer most of the time, not always, we'll see, from the question itself. Okay? So it starts with, are they? And we answer, yes, they are. Okay? Here, in the positive answer, we cannot use any contraction. But in the negative answer, of course, we can. And we're going to use the contraction because this is all informal conversation or communication. Let's look at the next one. Is Maria joining us for dinner tonight? This time, the person didn't say going to join us. They just used present continuous for the future. Is Maria joining us for dinner tonight? So we can say what? Yes, she is. Or, no, she's not. Or, no, she isn't. All right? Again, the positive answer has no contraction. All right? And here's another one, which is something you should learn because very often people will be asking you something about you. So let's look at a sample of that. Are you leaving soon? Now here, the answer cannot be taken from R because they're asking about you and you have to answer with I. So here it would be, are you leaving soon? Yes, I am. Or, no, I'm not. So these are probably good for you to memorize as answers. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Again, this one, the positive one has no contraction, right? But this one does, okay? Are you enjoying yourself? Are you having a good time learning this? You could say, I hope. Yes, I am. Now, let's practice what you've learned. So, in the first three sentences, we will add going to, to talk about the future. Number one, John blank watch TV. So, what would you say? John is going to watch TV. Okay? John is going to watch TV. You could also use a contraction and say, John's going to watch TV. All right, number two. The kids, which is sort of slang for ch saying children, okay? The kids, blank, not play outside. What would that be? The kids, now make it negative, aren't going to play outside. The kids are not going to play outside or the kids aren't going to play outside. Very good. Number three, Susan blank, go to the store. Pay attention to this one. I want you to use going to and what's our verb? Go. That can happen. So just follow the same principle as you did here. Susan is going to, and now what's our verb? Go. So yes, we can say 
Susan is going to go to the store. All right? If that's your verb, that's what you say. Susan is going to watch TV. Susan is going to play outside. Susan is going to go to the store. So sometimes the verb itself is go, plus in any case you have to use going to. So that's fine. That's what you do. All right? All right. Now for these three, let's use the present continuous. He blank play golf today. He, let's use the contraction, he's playing golf today. All right? Good. Number five, we not stay home tonight. So it's negative, it's present continuous for the future. Let's use the contraction, we're not staying home tonight, or you could say, we aren't staying home tonight. Good. Number six, Jeff blank, teach a class tomorrow. What would you say? Jeff is teaching a class tomorrow. Now, you see in all three of these, because we're using present continuous for the future, what do we have to have? This time marker. Today, playing golf today, but later today. It's still the future. Tonight, later tonight, or tomorrow, also the future. All right, so make sure that you add that time marker with the present continuous. Number seven. Now, we're going to make questions. Let's do the first one with the present continuous. What you do about the problem? How would you form that question? So we start with what. What you do about the problem? Make it into present continuous. What are you doing about the problem. Okay? That's it. Good. And then number eight, let's use going to when he contact you. What would it be? When is he going to contact you? Okay? When is he going to contact you? All right? So there you have the practice that we have done with all of these forms of the future. Now let's look at some common mistakes and you can help me fix them. So the first one. This student wrote, when they are arriving. So what's wrong there? This is a problem of word order. So what do we need to do when we have a question? We need to change the order of the words. So in this case, it would have to be, when are they arriving? Okay, when are they arriving? So be careful of the word order especially in questions. The other student wrote, they bring the drinks tomorrow. How can we fix that? What's missing? Let's say that's what's missing is going to. That's one way to talk about the future, right? So where would we put that? They are going to bring the drinks tomorrow. They are going to bring the drinks tomorrow. Okay? Good. Another student wrote, she going to be happy. What did this student forget? Forgot the verb to be. So what should it be? 
she is going to be happy. All right. Next. This person wrote, you're going to be late. So, what's wrong there? Look carefully. So, this is a spelling mistake. What should it be? Your spelt like this. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. This is short for you are going to be late. But Y-O-U-R is the possessive form of you. Like your book, your office, like that. That has a different meaning and you don't want to mix up these two words. Next. This person wrote, he's gonna call you later. So, what's going on there? What is that? You might have heard it, okay, people do use it, but this term, he's gonna, is slang. So, does that mean you can never use it? No, you can, but you need to be aware that it is slang. It is not formal English, it is not informal English either. Because even in informal English, we can use good English. And then there's slang. And you can use slang with your friends if you're just fooling around, something like that. But just be aware that it is slang and you don't, maybe, maybe you don't want to use it in a professional situation or something like that, or in an academic situation. Okay? So be careful of this one. And if you don't want to use it, then you'd have to say he's going to call you later. Okay? All right. And let's look at this one. This person wrote, talking about the future, Donna is driving to Florida. Okay. So what's happening there? As such, grammatically, the sentence is correct. Donna is driving to Florida. But what does it mean right now? It's present continuous. It means this is happening right now. But that's not what we wanted to say. We wanted to say about the future. We wanted to talk about the future. So what do we need to add? We need to add the time marker, some kind of phrase to indicate that we're talking about the future. So we could say Donna is driving to Florida next week or tomorrow or anything else like that, okay? Next summer, anything, some kind of time marker. And then now it's complete because you're using the present continuous for the future with a time marker. So be careful of these kind of mistakes when you're using these expressions and tenses. Now let's finish by doing a quick review of what we learned in this class. So we learned how to use going to to talk about the future. We learned how to use the present continuous for the future. We learned when to use them and how to use them, right? And by now, you should feel comfortable making sentences and questions like these. Let's have a quick look. He's going to travel. He's not going to travel. He isn't going to travel. Or is he going to travel? Right? So we had our positive sentence, our negative sentences, and our question. And we could add the question word like, when is he going to travel? Where is he going to travel? And so on. Okay? You've got it now. You have. All right. Also, we could use what? Present continuous for the future. For example, they're moving in May. What does it mean to move? To change your house from this house to another house. To move from this city to another city. Okay? The negative, they're not moving in May. Or they aren't moving in May. Or are they moving in May? All right? So when you can move comfortably between these kind of sentences, sometimes using present continuous, sometimes using going to, in informal situations, for things that are planned, then you know how to use these to talk about the future. All right? So where can you go from here? Well, 
The best way is really to write some sentences about your own life. What are you going to do after this lesson? What are you going to do this weekend? What are you going to do this month, this year? Write some sentences about yourself, your family, things like that. And that way you'll make it personal and it will also feel more meaningful to you because you're actually using it in a sensible way to talk about yourself and about things that matter to you, okay? Then when you're ready, you can move on to watch the next video in this series, which will help you to make further progress, all right? And if you need any more practice on this, then by all means, you can go to Ingvid to do a quiz on this lesson, okay? So thanks very much for watching and all the best with your English.